here to present Ms. Saad Alami. She's a prominent Iraqi women's rights leader and attorney who created one of the first um, legal clinics to support impoverished women and survivors of violence in Iraq. Um, so, in fact, she's the founder and chair of Women for Progress Center um, in Sadr City, uh, which is north of Baghdad, right? Mm, no, it's east of Baghdad. East of Baghdad, um, uh, Iraq. Uh, Ms. Alami has uh, supervised five comprehensive women's centers throughout Baghdad and executed the first continuing education conference for women's lawyers. She's a former member of the Baghdad Provincial Council and Sadr City District Council from 2004 to 2009. She's also the author of the bylaw for the district and sub-district councils of Baghdad province. Uh, in 2008, she was named the Iraq Women's Foundation uh, as Female Lawyer of the Year. Uh, she received the International Women of Courage Award in 2009 from the U.S. Uh, State Secretary, uh, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Michelle, uh, First Lady Michelle Obama. She was also the recipient of the Massachusetts Bar Association Public Service Award in May 2010. Um, she's an alumna of the Humphrey Fellowship um, Institute um, through the Fulbright, Fulbright program um, from the University of Minnesota Law School. Um, she completed a master's degree in international human rights law also from the um, University of Minnesota Law School in 2011. Um, more, most recently, um, Ms. Alami received the prestigious Fern Holland Award on June 17, 2014, so just last week, in Washington, D.C at the 13th annual Vital Voices Global Leadership Awards at the John F. Kennedy Center for Performing Arts. And um, I'd like to note that the Fern Holland Award honors a leader who takes tremendous risk to promote peace and defend human rights of a targeted or vulnerable community. And that's the award that was um, awarded to, uh, to Ms. Alami. Um, so we are honored and privileged here at Hamlin and the Twin Cities to host her here tonight and to hear her insights on the status of women in Iraq. And I'll hand over the floor. Thank you. Well, uh, <coughs> good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you so much for having me here today. And thank you for Professor Leila and to Kathy and uh, um, all who they uh, uh, being a s s uh, sponsor for this uh, event. Uh, um, uh, let me clarify something about the Ferran Holland Award because it, uh, I found it is so important to, to, to many people here to, to know who is Ferran Holland. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Ferran Holland, she is an American attorney and she was working in Iraq with the CPA who uh, try to helping and supporting women, uh, women's rights in Iraq and also to establish women's center uh, uh, to helping the, the Iraqi women. But 2004, she just killed in, in, in Iraq for her working there. So the vital voice is just to honor her name and uh, they established this award and they uh, uh, present this award uh, since uh, 10 years ago each year for uh, wom women who working in the same field from around the world. So this year, just last week, uh, they, uh, uh, I was from Iraq to, to receive this award, which is, you know, I found it is, uh, uh, since I'm, Ira I'm Iraqi and came from Iraq and we are working the same work and uh, uh, which is even that when her sister, she just presented this award for me in Jeff Kennedy Center uh, last week. Um, that I found it, it is, uh, it is just perfect, you know, to, to, to just uh, keep people, rem to remind uh, and keep uh, her name and her work and uh, to continue her journey that she started uh, in Iraq. So thank you so much for <laughs> this. Um, uh, back to my work uh, in, uh, in Iraq. Uh, um, uh, I started my work when uh, I was just uh, a lawyer. I mean, this work not uh, just uh, talking about the last decade in, in Iraq, which is we do not have any civil society uh, organizations that can work uh, helping uh, people uh, in different uh, ways. 
Um, so when I was lawyers in, in we practicing in particular the family laws, which is just uh, uh, affecting on uh, and bringing the, the family issues, women's issues, ch uh, children uh, uh, in the court and how we can help. And I, I just keep uh, uh, seeing that how that uh, uh, so many social, economic problems just affected on the lives of, uh, of uh, this uh, this components in particular women children so uh, just after 2003 I found it is uh, when they established the civil society organizations uh, I just just um, two months after the the April 2003 I joined to the to the to the uh, the movement of the civil society to help the people there and in, in any way that because at that time no one can even know even I was a lawyer I wasn't know anything about what is the human rights and what is uh, what is women rights and how and the way that we can help them so with this we started uh, in, uh, in, in helping these women uh, Firstly, I mean, the, uh, I want just to bring uh, or highlight on the on the work of the civil society in Iraq, which is, you know, very very new experience at that time. But I I, I believe they just succeeded to 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 bring the, 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 these issues to the to the public life, to the decision uh, makers. Uh, like uh, uh, started with the educate people. I mean, different kind of uh, people. People, the simple people, the poor people, the people in the in the work, uh, uh, in the government, in in everywhere. To just to raise the issues of the the human rights and uh, women's rights. Uh, what is the, what is the international uh, treaties or conventions? Uh, what is the Iraqi ob Iraq Iraq's obligations? Uh, uh, how we can implement this, uh, uh, what is the good governance that we should have, what is the rule of law, all these things, it was just very new. So uh, in 2007, uh, I, I started my, I established uh, my NGO, uh, as Leila, she mentioned in the introduction, that uh, called Women for Progress. Uh, the reason that I, I founded the uh, Women for Progress because since I'm I'm living in in, in Sadr City and uh, Sadr City it is one of the very poor area in, in in Baghdad in Iraq with the high population between 2000 2 million and a half to 3 3 million living in the just 10 mile squares uh, which is considered 2% of the Baghdad uh, area so uh, with the you know the, the problems with the education, with the social the social problems, the economic problems that just uh, it, it, it created not not just after two thousand and three, but because the, the, the wrong policies by the by the by the uh, former regime, and that is just impact on the on these populations and just keep this this these problems increasing daily by day so I found that just keeping educate I mean the educate people raising their owners it is important at different level with the different or certain component of the of the of the, of the population but to uh, people in this situation, in this environment, they need more than just talk or raising on it. They need services. They need something on the ground and touch their needs. So I, I, I found that I have an experience with the, with the family issues as a lawyer. So why I don't just uh, found, uh, which is, and I, I inspired by some Americans who they were there in Iraq because even for me I wasn't know what it is meaning of legal clinic. Um, so many people they think that it is just like uh, it is uh, it is a med medical clinic or what it is. So 
We started this work uh, in 2007 in order to, to, to provide uh, free legal assistance in different ways by uh, raising awareness on the legal rights and other, other different rights like social rights, economic rights, and political rights. Uh, and also uh, uh, providing legal advices for, for, for women and girls uh, in particular, and then legal representations, which is this is most important for, for, for women there and for the people, for the vulnerable groups of women and girls. Uh, through my experience at that time that uh, I noticed that uh, the legal education, it is, it is very important for the whole uh, population. It doesn't matter if they are educated or not educated. All they do not, they do not have this knowledge about the, the, the their legal rights. So, in I, even in, in particular for the poor, poor poor women, if they do not know what the legal rights they have, and how they can uh, uh, access to the justice, access to the courts, access to their rights, and other things that even they do not have the financial resources to hire a lawyers. And uh, uh, so many uh, women, uh, because also Iraq is considered one of the dominated tribal system, which is also this is impact on, uh, on, on, uh, s on the women, on children, on the whole uh, society. <coughs> One of the cases that it just keep in, keep in my mind, which is I couldn't even do anything for it. Um, there's an, a, a young woman, she has two children. One of them, he just died because she couldn't uh, provide him with the, the medical treatment because she was a poor. And uh, uh, she get divorced from her husband and uh, uh, just for the tribal settlements, they decided that uh, the father should take the custody of the of the of the her boy, and and according to the law that she has the right to have the custody. The major custody it is goes to women, not to to the men. But because that this uh, tribal se settlements, she just lost her custody on her little boy. So she lost one because she doesn't have the the medical treatment can because she's poor and her, her family couldn't support her even because this tribal settlement, because they have to, up, to obey the, the, the tribal decision. So from this, it just I said, no, I have to do something. I have to change this. I have to encourage women uh, by uh, let, let them know what the rights that they have and how they can get it. So we started our work in this. Uh, I have to admit that our, our, we are just a local NGO and we cannot help all, all, all women or the population that they need, which, which they, are, they are huge, huge. In, in, in not in my, my, my area that I am working in Southern City, but in different areas. Even when I, when I established my NGO, I, I saw so many women, they said, why we do not have NGO like this in our area? Why we do not have this, uh, these services? So some other NGOs in, 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 in Iraq, they start to know to have or to establish this kind of services to provide these services. But to be honest, it is just, it costs to hire lawyers because we do not have this the volunteering work or, or, or concept that the people couldn't work. And, and I understand that, you know, because the people, they need to, to, to live, need to, ha to, to have this life expenses. So to work voluntary, it is, uh, it is not an issue for them, for lawyers or for whoever want to, and can help to provide this, uh, these services for, uh, for, for these needy people. Um, with the, some support from some international donors, st started some, but it is still, still not enough. I mean, just very few. And it is just the, the services they provided, 
just ended when the project is just com comes to the end. I mean, for how long? For one year? And then what, what about this, this woman? What they can't do after that? How they can't get their rights? And also I want to mention that even that we have some good, good laws that can provide a woman some protection but it is still, you know, there are so many discriminated provisions, laws need to be amended, need to, to legislate new laws that can support, can provide the protection for, for women, for girls, for children. I am always saying all these components, children, women, girls, because we are working for the family, not working only for, for women. Uh, so, we keep working since 2007 until now in this way, with the support or without support of any, <laughs> any, mm -hmm. any, any uh, international donors or whatever. We do not have any support from the government. There is no government, no support like this. Always government looking to the civil society organization with the this suspicions. They are saying that they are just. Um, getting some some fund from from international NGOs with the with the, this uh, uh, suspicions of of corruption look like that there is no corruption in the in the government only with the with the civil society NGOs and uh, but we are keep going in the in the in the work because we need that we know that it is important and we know that this uh, in people they need need that and uh, with our work this uh, we we receive so many cases like the gender based violence cases and domestic violence cases um uh, some maybe some people they 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 just wondering that how how much what is the the, the the amount or the percentage of the of the gender-based violence that we have in in Iraq, we make some some studies, some uh, uh, questionnaires about uh, that. We found that more than 80 percent of the uh, 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 80 percent of the gender-based violence and uh, gender-based violence and domestic violence in in Iraq, and you know, I f I I think that is that is very normal to have this and I, I thought that we, I will have we will have more than this because that the the four wars that Iraqis population that they experienced and the 13 years of international economic sanctions and the uh, uh, sectarian violence and the terrorism terrorist acts that uh, happening in Iraq just after 2003 with the the 13 year, 30, 35 years of Saddam's dictatorship. So of course that is just uh, resulted to this huge amount of the gender-based violence. And because people, what they are saying in, 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 in everywhere, only they are saying the violence. So they just put all the, all the pressure that they, they got it from the streets, from the war, from everywhere, put it in the, the, the most fragile compo component of who they are women or children. Uh, part of our work also we have, uh, we hosting the visitation center. Uh, visitation center, it is for, uh, for the divorced parents that so who, is, who doesn't has the custody can, can see and to visit his uh, children uh, twice uh, uh, in a month. Uh, before 2003, there is an, uh, an a governmental places or can host this, but after that, uh, even the government refused to, to host this uh, visitation uh, services for, for the divorced parents with the, their children. So we take this responsibility at least to provide the, the, the family environment for, for them. And with the, our social workers, we, we just succeeded to bring back 10% of the divorce cases and make them reunion to with their with the, their children and uh, i know that there is no institutions can uh, provide the, the services just that they need like the mental health uh, mental, mental health uh, uh, centers or uh, hospitals uh, we do not have this uh, psychosocial uh, 
providers, uh, sent, I mean, I'm talking about the government, not about, still, I mean, the work that all the uh, NGOs they are doing uh, need, need more. I mean, it is not, not enough with the, the limited resources that the NGOs that they, 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 they have. Uh, also part of our work, it is uh, uh, providing the psychosocial uh, treatment for uh, the victims of the gender-based violence for children themselves also. And just lately I found that how much important to women to be empowered economically, which is just, I mean, women uh, in Iraq, the fact that we have 1 million and 600,000 women widows and uh, uh, four to five millions orphans, and then the dramatically increase of the of the divorce cases that we have now, in particular among the young uh, uh, spouses, um, because when 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 we, we in, in Iraq uh, we have this problem with the early marriages, and also with the unregistered um, marriage contracts, I mean, unregistered in the courts. And uh, this is an other uh, challenges and the problems that we are facing, which also we try to help by raising the awareness of the, of the, of the community um, to, uh, to provide the protection for, for, for their daughters by register this, uh, the marriage contract and to not uh, allow for this early marriage but it, it's, it's just keep increasing. And uh, women, I mean girls with the 13, 14 years old only, they get married and after just a few months they get divorced and uh, back to their houses with, uh, with their fam to their families with the two or one kids or, or even more. And we have another fact or uh, the problems in, in I'm talking in Iraq and in Southern City that we have this, the extended families, that 15, 14, 8, 20 people, they are living in the very small size of, of houses. So it will be hard for women to go back after she get divorced or after she being widow with the many of I mean, three, four, two uh, children to her family that is, that they cannot handle all these uh, numbers of new members to, that, to their families. So that's a create another problem for women, how she can't raise her children because she doesn't have the support. Uh, because even that, her, her family, they are barely can live with uh, their limited. So we started, I, I just was, that, that thing it just, I keep, thinking about it, how I can do that. Because the woman with the, with the zero education, I mean, this and what I'm concerned about this level of women. Because even if the woman with the at least certain amount of education, he, she can find a job opportunity in different ways. But the woman without any education, how she can do that, how she will do it. And how she can, uh, uh, build her capacity, her skills to find the job that she is supposed to be. And so many programs in Iraq with the, with the support of the international donors, they just required amount of education. But the, 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 the women that I work with, they haven't any kind of education, so we can help them. So just recently, just after, before I came here, we started a new, a new project that we do, there is no required for women to have any kind of education to build their skills, how they can empower economically. And this project, with this project, we are targeting 600 widows and divorced and women with the mis the, who they, with the missing of husband situation and with the uh, victims of the gender-based violence. Uh, uh, we are to include them in this new project. Again, I'm saying that still not enough. We hope that we can provide the services and even how we can enhance the quality of the services. And in, 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 in Iraq, uh, uh, I'm, I'm talking about uh, um, 
in the in the government or in the legislation body. Um, uh, these issues of, I mean, the women's issues or children or the population is issues, it is not the priority for the governments after 2003 until now. Always the security, it is the priority for them. And even the security, we couldn't achieve, achieve it. They couldn't achieve it for the Iraqi population. With the corruption, with the terrorism, with the, their sectarian divisions between them, and that is not, I mean, women's, children, people needs, it is not a priority for them. So uh, we have, I, as I said, uh, we have certain kind of laws can provide or bring rights for women, but some other, as I said before, there's a discriminated, and we need more laws to provide this protection and more rights for women and children. Um, uh, but with the lack of the political will, and we couldn't go forward in this. Um, there are some steps, I mean, positive steps. I will not say everything it is negative. There are some positive steps taken by the pressure of that put from the civil society organization, from the international uh, uh, community, both on the on the on the government on the decision makers, we like uh, in 2003 and then in 2005 with the, our in constitutions, there is an attempt to abolish the family law, which is the only legal instrument or tools can provide the protection of the right for for women, girls, and children. But when the conservative decision makers come to the power, want to abolish. They said this is not from the Sharia law. This is a civil law, this is not against the Sharia law. So we start to fight again with the different kind of uh, uh, this, with the, with, the, with the laws, how we can keep this law. With, with even this law, it is just uh, uh, legislated in 1959. 50 years ago, even 50 years ago, okay, we accept this very old law. We accept that. But let, let's keep it, not to abolish it. <coughs> but they keep doing that. With the pressure that made, we succeeded to at least to, to frozen the article of, it's called 41 in the Constitution, it, uh, which is stays to, to, to abolish the family law. And then just six months ago, I mean, in the beginning of this year, we started another uh, journey of fighting with the Minister of Justice when he came up with the, what is called Jafari family law, which is called the, uh, deba on, depending on the, uh, on the Shia uh, school, which is, you know, the family law that we have in back to 1959, it comes from very advancing, advanced reading for the Sharia law, from the five schools, Islamic five schools. And they put what is the most best interest for the women's, girls, children in this law. It is very advanced law in the whole region, not in, in only in Iraq. So for that, they want to abolish it and the, the Minister of Justice come up with the, what's this, the Jafari family law. With this, with this draft, allowing to girl with the less than nine years old to get married. And with another violations. And we just w fighting just how we can minimize the early marriages. And he want to, to, to put it in the law this time. So we keep, you know, <laughs> look like that, uh, the, the, this fighting in, in, in with them open many doors for, for, for us, you know. And uh, in 2009, as I, I, I recall that, the, we, we, we were talking about the gender-based violence issues, domestic uh, violence issues, 
But the decision makers, the government, they keep saying, we denying that they said, no, we do not have uh, any gender-based violence or domestic violence or violence against women. You are just trying to hurt the reputation of the country. So, yeah. So with the with the whole this uh, this, we keep pushing them and put the pressure on them. We succeeded, and they start to admit it because this it is just connected with the security of the of the country. So when they saw that this uh, this bound between the security and the gender-based violence. In the in uh, or domestic violence in the houses, they said okay. We they established the family protection units, which is an, a governmental body, part of the Ministry of Interior, which is also located in the police stations. Which is the another problematic issues because how women can go to the police stations, how they can report their cases, it is a it is kind of taboo there. Women cannot go there, and and because also an, another stereotypes, which is a true, not uh, not a rumors, or that some abuses, some violations comes from the police themselves. So women can can go there. Who allowed to them to go there? And if she report for her cases, what protection that can provide to them? And if they can't be able to go back to their families, if their families are allowed to them to do that, you know, all these debates. And even when they stop, I say, okay, that's good. It is a good step that uh, government taken. They at least they admitted that there is a need and to establish this. But the problem is we do not have a law. Still, they are working on the Iraqi penal code legislated in 1969. Also, there are some, some provisions in this law allowing to the husband to beat his wife, to beat his children. So how can, how they, how they, if they, if they depend on this law, how they, they can pro provide this protection for, for, for these women, for children? They drafted then, okay, they said, okay, we, drafted the, in the, the law uh, for protection of domestic violence, which is still four years or five years from now, is still in, under the discussion because there is no political will to legislate this. Because this is, they said, this is again is the culture, how we can do it. And, be, and, be, and it is not again, the, it is again the, the culture, but it is, also, the domestic violence, it is against the, the, the Islam, against the Sharia law. Sh they saying no, the Sharia, uh, the Sharia saying that a man can beat his wife. And this is just because the misinterpretation of Quran, because they want to, 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 to believe in this. So, uh, I mean, even this, this draft, it is not, it is not enough to provide the protection, but it is still, and even still, it is a draft. Hope that with the, the, the new parliament, the new government, we can, for the next term, that they can, we can pass this law, at least to have something better than nothing. Um, also in 2012, they passed uh, a new law for the anti-trafficking law. Also, this is a huge uh, issue in, in, in Iraq. But it is still, with the, all these laws that can provide some, bring some rights or provide protection, but it is still, there's a gap of the implementation of these laws. I mean, what is the benefit if we have some good laws? If they couldn't implement this, this, these laws in the, in the way that it should be. And if there is no, institutions that are able to implement this. If there is no capacity building for the, the staff or the people who they are, can working in these institutions. And even with the, some support from the, the international community like United Nations or European Union or American NGOs, st 
all, you know, it is uh, very few efforts. And it's, it's needed. I mean, I believe this is the effort from the government should be. Iraq is considered the mid-income country in the, in, the, in the world. Not It is not not, not a poor country, but uh, at least have uh, financial resources. But this resources is just because the corruption, so no one pay attention for this. So keep this in this, all this social problems increase and effect on the society, which is again, I'm saying that it's effect on the security of the, of the, of the country or the, of the community. So this, uh, this uh, uh, things about also in terms of the political rights for women uh, in Iraq, uh, and women has the right to vote since 1980. Um, but she doesn't have the real uh, political participation until after 2003, when the, the new uh, constitution 2005 uh, stated that women, uh, I mean, we have a quota for not less than 25% in the parliament. Uh, two months ago, when the general election take place, um, the parliament, it's uh, 382, uh, tw 28, sorry, 28 seats. Uh, 83 women, they won in the election. I mean, this is just to, to meet the, the quota uh, requirement in the, in, the, in the constitution. But what it is a great achievement that we had in the last uh, election, that out of 83 women, 22, they won without need to the quota. I mean, that, that, that is an, an, a great achievement because women, they succeed to, uh, to, to convince the, 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 their community that they can come vote to them and they convince in their work rather than the males. And uh, some other provinces, I mean, w women came in the top, the top of the whole male and, and females. And three or two provinces, and this is the first time that happened in, in the election. But with this achievement, also come up something which is just a threaten the, this achievement. They're saying, okay, so if you, if you now have no problem with the people to vote for women, so you don't need a quota anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another challenge will come up in the next uh, next uh, election, and so we will we'll keep going <laughs> to in our battle to to, to fighting these uh, these people who they are just against these uh, achievements and against the women's rights in the in Iraq. So this is in terms of the <laughs> women's uh, issues. Uh, and also with the with the another challenge that with the, the high rate of the uh, illiteracy among the population, which is uh, just increasing among the young young people now, among the children, and because that the the bad quality of education, um, enough not enough school uh, in, in in Iraq, um, uh, the. Uh, the teachers who they don't have the quality or the, the capacity to how they teach their, their children, also the, the old fashion of the curriculum that they are still depending on. And uh, um, each class, uh, I mean, I'm talking in, in Southern City, each class have um, 80, 80 students in one class, mm -hmm. one class, 80. If you, some of them they are sitting on the ground. So again, if if, if for each each class um, or each course is forty five minutes, so for eighty people, I mean, if the teacher just saying one word for each one, it is just uh, she couldn't uh, provide that uh, <coughs> the class or the course that she should uh, deliver. Um, yeah, so this is that, uh, the thing that are issues that uh, I hope that I covered <laughs> all <Yeah>. in my... <laughs> also, some other issues, yes, that the, the security and peace and in, in Iraq and the rule of women in this. And key, I mean, the decision makers, they keep 
excluding women from the each process of the peaceholding process or negotiations. And uh, to be honest, I think that is just because we have another challenge in women's leaders. It is one of the very problematic issues because we, we have the lack of the un, 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 to be unified together as a women's as a women's leaders. I mean, each woman want to be to be the leader to dominate this, I mean, which is the another dictatorship start to come up. Yeah, with the, among the women's leaders. Mm -hmm. So for that, we are just, our rights, it is just, uh, we lost some some rights, some achievements because that, because this dividing, and there's no uh, unity between between the, the women. I mean, the, we, we do not have the unity between the, the political leaders themselves, and it is the same situation for the women's leaders also. I mean. The, it, it is good, as I mentioned, we have a quota, but what is the benefit if I'm not, not if we are talking about the, the quantity, but what about the quality of women in the decision makers in the parliament, who may or never bring the women's issues in, on the table? They are, because they are just, uh, have this strong affiliation with their own political parties. That they what they care about, not to, to, to care about the people needs. So with, the, with, the, with these problems between women's leaders inside the parliament, inside, and by even in the government body, we do not have only, only one woman, state minister woman affairs, only one. And also, she is just, she tried, to be honest, she tried to do her best, but she is just, with the, the culture barriers, that is, it just affected on all, all the people there. And between her political party, her conservative political party, which is the prime minister political party, and uh, so she couldn't make this. I mean, and with the, the lack of the budget that she has, with the lack of staff, because it is a state ministry. So um, that is just impact on the women's le leadership in the in the country to bring the women's issues to the public life to the on the and to put it on the table. Yes. So this is the, the issues that. Uh, I believe that we all we are all facing in in Iraq in terms of uh, of the women's issues, which we try to to, to help. Uh, I would love to to for any questions to. Well, as a landmass to make you all like four thousand years, where is current Iraqi law drawn from? I mean, Ottoman, Hashemite, like Hashem Revolution of the fifties, party. I mean, I. I in, in terms of, of which which uh, which laws that you are, you mentioned a lot of family laws. Family came law. out of Qasim. Yeah, this is Qasim, the Qasim, uh, mm -hmm. Abdul Karim Qasim, yeah. who was came after the turn Iraq to be republic mm -hmm. in ninety. I mean, most of the achievements that we we had during this period. I mean, first woman judge in nineteen fifty eight, first mm -hmm. woman minister in nineteen fifty eight. For the, this advanced family law in 1959, during Abdul Karim Qasim uh, ruling Iraq at that time. Uh, as I mentioned, that the, the the current family law that we have in 1958 is taken and based on the best or the more advancing reading for the five uh, um, Islamic uh, schools. So it does not depend on, in Iraq we have, what, what, I, that what I believe, I'm, I hope not wrong, two sects, Sunni and, and Shia people. Mm -hmm. But we, when they, when they legislated this law, when they dropped the law, they take him from the five, not only from two uh, Islamic schools, which is, which is the mess, I mean, the best interest for the, for the women, for I mean the whole family, not even for uh, for for women or for children. Um, but uh, this, the draft of the Jaffari law that you are asking, 
uh, it is depend only on the, I'm, which is, you know, this is part of the, why we are fighting this law. Mm -hmm. And, and they're saying, they saying this is our rights, if we are talking about the democracy, so our, our rights are part of this democracy to have our own law as a, as a, as a Shia people, okay? And depend on the, on the Jafari sect. Um, I mean, because each sect, and this is just interpretation. I mean, all, even this all five Islamic sects or schools, it just comes from where? It just comes from the interpretation for the Quran. So it might be they are wrong, might be they are right about something. I mean, some some Islamic schools they are they, they have a good part. Some they are not. You know, they just that's violating part. I mean, like the the Jafri law, it is just allow the girls less even less than nine years. Uh, the sex uh, the, the the Jafri school saying nine, but the, the draft saying even less than nine can can marry. And so some other some other violations stuff in this law, like uh, um, um, a, a, a man if he doesn't have uh, or has the uh, intercourse with his wife, he will not pay her the life expenses. So looks like that she is working uh, just to do that. Not she is not she is a wife or whatever. <laughs> okay, might be technical stuff. <laughs> it might be technical. <laughs> um, no, uh, well, you, you covered quite a few of the issues this morning, <coughs> the education, the health care, how many children they have, the orphans. I'm wondering if you could contrast, you know, the, the situation now with how it was before the law on these three issues. Okay. Uh, in terms of the education, before, I mean, in the 70s, 80s, I say 80s, Iraq eliminated the illiteracy. There is no illiteracy in Iraq in, in, in 80s. Zero illiteracy for the whole component of the population, <coughs> no matter women or no yeah. But we have now, we, I mean, uh, a high rate of the of the of the illiteracy. I mean, with the, this, uh, um, as I said, there's no attention to 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 the education sector in in Iraq, as I described in terms of the teachers of the infrastructures of the of the of the education institutions in terms of the even the way of how they, how they dealing with the with the with the children. I mean that. Some, it, it's even the, the teachers they need need how uh, 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 train them uh, build their capacity that how they should deal with these little kids not just to yelling them when they are do, do not do think they do not making their homework might be might be they have some problems at, at, at home might be he lost his mother and no one take care of him. It is just put more more pressure on this kid. And because this, as, as I said, that we have this problem with among the, uh, the, the, uh, the students, I mean, the young people, because they left the schools, because the way of the how teachers, they dealing with them, they feeding them badly. So they enforced to, to leave. This is one of the reasons besides the economic conditions. They left the schools because they have to help their, 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 their families. So this is the, 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 the situation. I mean, in terms of the education, no, before 2003 was much better. Even the, the Iraqi universities, is one of the very respective, uh, respected uh, universities in the world. In the world, I mean, Arab, I, I keep hearing of some Arab people in the, in, the, in the region, they say, we were dreaming to send our, our, our daughters to, to, to study in, in the Iraqi universities, like in, in medicine uh, schools, which is 
uh, they are in everywhere in the world and most respected doctors and physicians in the world, not in, in, in Egypt. And also the engineering, I mean the whole the achievement in terms of the technology, it's, they, it just comes from the Iraqi universities, the professors. I mean now if you are asking me how many uh, master's degrees or PhD, I, I, 2007 I tried to, to apply for one of the, to, to have a master degree in Baghdad University or Al Mustansriya University. But more than 1,000, 2,000 people, they ab apply for three seats. Because, because there is no enough uh, uh, qualified professors can supervise your thesis or your uh, mm -hmm. uh, study in, in, at this level. So this is, and because many of the professors in Iraq, they killed after 2003 or they left Iraq. Mm -hmm. So this is the situation in this. In terms of the health care, this is the same situation. So many physicians, they killed, they targeting, they kidnapped, or they left Iraq. So we do not have this, uh, the qualified physicians working in the Iraqi hospitals. And if I, I, I cannot trust now to go to any, 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 uh, any physician because each one saying different uh, stuff. I mean, in terms of the designations of what, what, what a health problem that I have or anyone have. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is a situation in terms of the health and the education. Thank you. That the government was starting to get that domestic violence was a security risk. Would you say more about that? And the second question is when Kathy and a few, of us, a few others of us were in Najwa, we went to Cooper University, we saw many women in the university. And I'm wondering what happens when they graduate. Do they find jobs? For the first question, um, um, you know, when the children, they, I mean, now t more than 10 years, I mean, even before that, I mentioned four wars, the international, 13 years, international economic sanctions, violence, sectarian violence, the dictatorship, 35 years. I mean, my age, and under the only thing that they, they saw in their life, it is just the violence and unsecured life. That is just impact on their mentality, how they are dealing with each other. Believe me that, I mean, I, I, I'm, I don't know, it is not excuse, but the people there, just they getting aggressive in their daily basis life dealing with each other. And that is just because the violence they are experienced daily. So the young generation, I mean, the, in 20s or less, I mean, when they saw this, this violence, the only, I, th I think they need, they, they, or they believe that is the most thing to, to have a power. And the power comes from to join the criminal groups, to join to militias, to join to the terrorists, to join whatever. So that is just impact on the security, of course, of the country. This is for this, uh, for the second question you're asking women where they, Women in, in, the, in the universities, sometimes it is just sur surprised so many people when they, more than 60% of the students in the, in, the, in the university are women. So when they are going after that, if they, have, if they are getting lucky, can find a job in the, in, the, in the government, which is the most secured job for them. I'm always, I keep saying that as, as a civil society organizations, as a NGOs, we have struggling with this. We do not have qualified staffs in Iraq. Because even that 
the 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 qualified people that if you train them and they getting qualified they are looking for the secure job in the government so they left the work that they are doing with the, our NGOs or going to the international NGOs because it just give them the high income so all women get married this is kind of the of this financial secure for them or they stay without even uh, waiting um, someone can I mean from their family depending on their family's members and they keep depress them because and oppress them because because they are depending on them financially so this is the situation for for women where, where should the most of the effort be put I like the idea of, of the education it seems that it's going to be hard to change the older people and that that getting into the schools and in the um, the educational system seems to be I, mean, I, I guess I'm, I'm kind of wondering where do you think your efforts are are paying off the most more potential okay what the most potential and the hope that I saw from the work that uh, we are doing in terms or regarding to the gender-based violence issues that as I said 2009 no one want to talk about it all they are denying that we do not have the gender-based violence and when we started our work to providing the services for the victims I mean in Sadr City it is hard to get in to make women to talk about these sensitive issues. But when you, you, I mean, the achievement is how you build the trust between you as a providers and the, and the uh, beneficiaries, the, 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 the victims themselves. So they start to, to break this, uh, as, as I think, wall of the silence. In, 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 in my country, there's no more options. It is one only one option. It is to stay. To stay and to help people and to do what is, and to be responsible about the thing that, because people need you. I mean, the, the, these kind of people that we are working to helping them, they need, be, be, I mean, the qualified people, skilled people, experienced people, people who they have the desire, who they have the commitment, to their to their work to their own people i always said we do not have option only one option just just to stay there and to do what what we should do to to do thank you